Okay, so um, we'll go back to our subject on confession, declaration. There's a question in the chat. However, we'll uh, we'll come to that. Uh, Sunny, he's asking, uh, as we are talking about confession, is there also bad confession? Uh, maybe you mean like wrong confession in life? So there is. We'll we'll come to that. Um, so I so far I was saying that. Um, Jesus has taught us to speak the faith. Okay, if you believe, then say, say to the issue, the problem, the difficulty. And as we practice our faith, um, we will we will become stronger and stronger, right? Uh, in the exercise of our faith. Now, we must say what God is saying. Okay, that's the most important thing. You have to say what. God is saying. So when we look at a passage like Hebrews chapter 13, verses 5 and 6, uh, just look at that passage. It has, um, there is a thought and the writer shares how we can make a confession of that thought. So maybe I will read it out and explain. In verse 5, Hebrews 13, he says, Let your conduct be without covetousness. Be content with such things as you have. For he himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Verse 6, is, it says, So we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper, I will not fear. What shall man do to me? So notice, in verse 5, God is saying something. He himself has said, or God, in other words, what is God saying? It is in the context of uh, covetousness. Covetousness is when, you know, when um, uh, we desire what somebody else has. God gives all of us according to his grace on our lives and according to our life's purpose. But we look at another person and we want what they have. That is covetousness. When you know we are wanting what somebody else has and that's not a godly thing. Um, so uh, the writer is saying, don't be covetous. Okay, don't have a, a covetous conduct, conduct. Be content. What God has given you, you be happy with that. You know, then there will be a blessing on it. Then, you know, that will increase. So in that context, he says, why should we not be covetous? Because God is saying, because he himself has said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. That means that God is saying he is our provider. Can he not provide sufficient for each one of us? Of course, he can provide for all of us. So we don't have to look at what others have and want that. You got it? Because he himself has said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. So that means God is saying, I am your provider. I will provide everything that you need. So when God says something, what should we do? Now, have you all uh, sung songs? In some songs, you have an echo, right? I will, um, what is that song? I will worship. And then you hear another thing saying, I will worship. You echo. Whatever one sentence is sung, we generally echo the same sentence again. You, maybe the men sing and then the women sing the same line. So it's similar even in our faith journey. When God says something, what is God saying right now? I will provide for you. What should we echo? What should be our echo? When God is saying, I am your provider, I should say, you are my provider. Got it? So in this passage, that's what the writer is saying. When God himself has said, I will never leave you, I will never forsake you, so we may boldly say, what should we say? The Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can man do to me? Got it? So this is like, a declaration. We make a declaration of whatever God is saying, we uh, say the same thing. We proclaim the same thing over our lives. Okay. So uh, 
this is how if you if you've noticed um i read psalm 91 one day and uh, i said that um he who dwells in the secret place so we talked about god's protection that god is our protection i will say of the lord he is my refuge and my fortress so when god is saying i am your protection i will say he is my protection got it so that is how our confession should be so as we read the word of god as we listen to um, you know messages you see what god is teaching you about himself when god says i am jehovah rafa the god who heals you what should i say lord you are my healer you are my healer got it so whatever he says we boldly say yes god that is who you are that is what you do that is the way our declaration should be so in our daily walk you know um, there are many things which we can confess and declare we can say what god has done for us on the cross how our sins are forgiven i am forgiven uh, i am um, healed i am blessed uh, i am victorious so many things right have happened on the cross so we we must say those things every day we must say those things Uh, that god is leading me i'm so blessed i'm walking in abundant life because what is what are we doing we are just speaking in line with what has happened what jesus has done that is the way to express our faith in what jesus has done confess it speak it now yes it's true sometimes we don't feel like uh you know it's happening like when i say okay god you are my provider maybe i find myself in a lot of uh, uh, financial need but it's okay that situation will change that's my faith right so even in that situation i must declare what god says about him this is the way we must declare find out what god is saying if god is saying something i will bless you you say okay god you are the one who bless is me if god says i give you abundant life i give you liberty freedom from slavery from sin you say yes i am free in the name of jesus sin cannot rule over my life i rule over sin you got it so begin to speak what the word says and it is so 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 powerful very powerful the more we speak the more we confess and please remember it's not a trick unfortunately in the christian world uh, very sorry to see this uh, happen there are a lot of um, you know uh, we say excesses in christianity excess means um, yes there is the truth but what people do is they pull it they stretch it right to untruth and that's very dangerous so that has happened even with regard to faith and confession there are confessions that people have made um uh, you know all kinds of confessions and god will do this god will do that whereas there is no truth to it and people have uh, um you yeah, people have been hurt because of such preachers such ministries uh, such messages so uh, we we are not talking about making faith and confession a trick it's not a trick uh, have you heard they say name it claim it have you heard that yeah so there are some teachings where people say you just say it you'll get it because jesus said in mark 11:23 whatever uh, you know you you say to the mountain so then what has happened is they've used it like a formula take it use it get it you want money say get it you want job say get it but it doesn't work like that right we need some sense of uh, honor to god some sense of fear of god when we are applying the truth of god's word so we should not um, make an excess as i told you right just stretch it and and make uh, the truth as the untruth don't do that got it so confess whatever is there in the word so as i've been saying the blessings of the cross we can confess we can confess who we are in christ we can confess how the father loves us right you can confess and sometimes even in our confession what happens you may even come up with a song there are so many songs that have confessions yes or no we sing so many songs with confessions uh but it's good it's very good it's always good to speak what we believe right so do that speak it out 
we can confess um, that you know Jesus is making intercession for us. We can confess that Jesus is coming back again. He will take us with him. Uh, so these are all confessions that we can make, joyful confessions, uh, because it is very much part of the truth of God's word. Now coming to what uh, Sunny was asking, can we make wrong confessions? We can. Okay, so what can be some of those wrong confessions? Um, see, we, we start to speak the facts uh, and not the truth. Then wrong confession happens because... Whatever we said just now, we said that, uh, you know, uh, Jesus and the cross makes us victorious, right? But as a fact, maybe in our lives right now, we are not yet there. We are not yet seeing victory every day, okay? But what are we seeing? The fact is failure. I'm trying, but I'm failing. I'm trying, I'm failing. What happens is if I am not careful, I will start confessing the facts and I'll start saying, I'm such a failure. I will never prosper. Uh, I will never be able to, you know, uh, accomplish what God wants me to do. So what is my confession now? It's not in line with what God is saying about me. I'm speaking the facts more than the truth. Then uh, it's possible to, actually it's very powerful because when you speak the, when you confess the uh, faith or confess the truth, those things happen. But when you don't confess, it won't happen. That also is a possibility. So it is that powerful. So if I use my tongue to say that I'm not blessed, imagine, okay, we make declaration, I am blessed. But if I say every Sunday, I'm not blessed, I'm not blessed. Do you think I won't be blessed? Yeah, actually, it could happen. Because Jesus is the high priest of our confession. Not that he is backing up my bad confession, but I don't have a good confession. So what is it that Jesus can agree with, uh, you know, to make happen in my life? So these are all dangerous things. When we keep saying um, uh, unbelief, we speak unbelief, we speak uh, failure, we speak fear. You know, sometimes we say things like, um, I have a lot of fear. You know, I have a lot of fear. See, it's good to admit. I'm not saying start lying about the reality. That's not what I'm saying. Admit it. But to make that a um, part of our lives, to keep saying it repeatedly. You know, I always have fear. I remember this uh, long back when, you know, as a volunteer, I started serving in church. Um, at that time, somewhere in some sermon pastor had said, he said that, uh, you know, people... Uh, when given a responsibility, um, they they hesitate, okay, and uh, they don't take it up, and uh, it's it's an opportunity missed, something like that. He was talking about it, and he was just saying why why do people miss opportunities? Um, uh, maybe because of fear and all. He was just sharing that. I thought to myself, it was very true for me. It was very true for me. Fear, what may even if I take it, I won't be able to do it. You know, I won't be able to minister. So all this used to run in my head and then I won't take it only. So after he shared like that, I decided even if I'm feeling scared, I'll do it. Right. So from that point onwards, I just started pushing myself like I'm feeling scared, but I can do this. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Just step in, step in. Next, next, next. So uh, is fear there? Yes, fear is there. But. What is my confession? My confession is what I believe. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I'll not let fear limit me. Now imagine, if I start confessing my uh, facts, fact is, I'm full of fear. And every time I say it, I'm so afraid. I don't think I can do it. You know, maybe somebody else is better. So I, if I keep doing that, what will happen? I'll start believing in that, right? So I am speaking untruth. What does the Bible say? I have not given you a spirit of fear, 2 Timothy 1.7, uh, you know, but uh, a spirit of um, uh, power, love, and sound mind. So change the confession. I have not, I don't have a spirit of fear. I'll try, I'll do this. You got it? So then you got to push yourself. Then you begin to see that, you know, actually, 
things are happening because you're taking that chance. You're overcoming that fear. Not that fear is not there. Fear is very much there. But don't keep talking about it. You got what I'm saying? Don't talk so much about the facts. Admit the fact, but speak the truth. Got it? So in this way, we won't be speaking, um, we won't be speaking wrong confessions. But if you speak the wrong confessions, for example, even this example pastor gave, he, he said that, um, you know, imagine there are two people, they have the same qualification. They have the same qualification, same experience. They can apply for the same job. One person is confident, the other person is not. Why? Same, everything same. Same age, same experience, same degree, same college, graduated, same date, everything same. One person is confident. Yeah, I can do this job. Another person is scared to even attend the interview. It's all inside. Got it? It's all inside. What are their confessions to themselves? Right? Maybe one person is saying, yeah, okay, I have this much, this much uh, experience and knowledge. I'll try. The other person, maybe he's thinking in a different way and his thinking and his confession is, oh, somebody else can be much better than me. Somebody else has more experience than me. Somebody else has more knowledge than me. I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't do it. So it depends. So when we are going on with the wrong confession, it will bring so much fear in us. It will take out all the faith. And when there's no faith, do you think things can happen? Without faith, it is impossible to please God. So wrong con confession. Yes, Sunny, there can be wrong confessions. We should not make wrong confessions, first of all. But if we keep making wrong confessions, it becomes an open door for the enemy. Okay? For example, I told you about fear, right? So there is, there is normal fear, which all of us have, which is a good thing. But after some time, if I don't know how to manage my fear, then it goes into, uh, you know, like my emotions, where my emotions have a lot of fear and I have to now try to overcome that. So it's only in the area of my soul. But there's another level. That level is, I can, be, um, I can be influenced by demons. Because the Bible also talks about the spirit of fear. There is something known as the spirit of fear. So these spirits, they usually they operate by words. Demon spirits operate by words. Okay. So when, when um, I am going on saying, I'm so fearful, I'm full of fear, I'm full of fear, I'm full of fear, I'm giving an open door or an invitation for the spirit of fear. I'm saying, please come. You got it? So we have to be very careful as believers. If you keep saying, if you keep saying the wrong confession, oneness, uh, you know, things won't happen according to the word because there's no faith. Faith won't be left. Second is, we are opening doors for the demonic world to influence us. Okay? So that way, wrong confession is very dangerous. We have to quickly change it. Got it? So uh, these are all, you know, just some, some thoughts. So wrong confession can be about defeat, can be about failure. It can be about Satan. Sometimes we say, oh, Satan is so powerful. I'm so scared. Satan is so powerful. What should we say? Jesus is so powerful. Satan, you are defeated. That's the right confession. But we say the wrong confession. Satan is so powerful. I'm so scared. I'm so scared. That really begins to happen because the demonic world likes it with the wrong confession. Right? Have you seen people who, um, just for our thinking sake, I'm saying this, uh, even when you look at uh, the uh, people who practice like black magic and all the sorcery, they say a lot of things. They chant a lot of things. Have you noticed? Yeah, because you see, words are powerful. That even in the demonic world, even for us. So wrong confession, it's not good at the least. It's, uh, it can open doors for the demonic, you know, at the highest level. So um, it's very important what we say from our mouths. And that is why even things like, you know, uh, authority figures like parents and parents say words on that, uh, about their children. If they say, oh, this is a useless fellow, like if they say that about their son, 
um, somewhere that affects. So that is why we should speak blessing, right? We should speak what God says about the children. We say, no, you're blessed. Your um, God is with you. You will do great things for God. So as parents, as authority figures, when we speak with our mouth, right? Blessings on God's people. That's what God wants. We should not speak negativity on God's people. You got it? Okay. So these are all just a few things uh, uh, connected to um, wrong confession. Now, some uh, practical things that I said is uh, we shouldn't make it a game. You know, say, get it, uh, and um, uh, take it very lightly, confession. So don't do that. Always have the fear of God, honor God, uh, be reverent towards God. Uh, confession must be within the limit of God's word. Okay, don't go outside the word and, you know, do weird things. Um, then rely on God's supernatural grace and power and not on our own natural abilities. Uh, where there is conflict between our senses and God's word, we must take the same stand as Abraham. Persevere in faith. Okay. Um, and the more we see happen, you know, sometimes what will happen is when we are practicing the truth of God's word, we'll see that it's working. Okay. At that time, we should not become proud. Got it? Because um, uh, it will happen. Because all this is true. Did I tell you once, uh, I, um, I mean, this is the first time I have seen something um, you know, change after commanding it. Uh, I don't think I have I, I have seen something like that in my experience. But uh, there was uh, one girl with a swelling on her hand. Did I share in your class? No. Okay. So one girl, she had come to church. And uh, after the prayer, she said, um, like, uh, Pastor, just feel feel my hand. So I felt over here when I touched, it was like a, like a stone, a ball, like a ball almost like a stone, okay? And uh, she said, I'm going in for biopsy this week. I don't know. I'm so scared. Uh, it looks, doctors are saying all kinds of things that it's going to be this condition, that condition, all that. You please pray. So uh, that moment when I, when I felt it, no, like a stone, I didn't know what to pray. Uh, sometimes you just don't know what to say. Uh, so I, I was like, Holy Spirit, just help me. But I got so angry at the devil. I really got so angry at the devil, you know, making God's people sick like this. It's just not fair. So I didn't even uh, pray a prayer. I just got her hand. I touched that, um, uh, you know, like that growth. Okay. And I'm sure it's not me because I'm not that kind of person at all. But I felt like the spirit of God at that time. I, I just loudly said, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. You will disintegrate. You will disappear right now. I command you to disappear. And I just told that girl, you come back. We'll see what happens. Okay. So um, she didn't come the next week, but she came, I think, something like two weeks later. She was not very regular to church. She came back two weeks later and I forgot about it. I even forgot about it that, you know, we had prayed. So after the service, she came. She's like, you won't believe what happened after you prayed. Every day, it just started shrinking. It disappeared. So the whole mass just disappeared, apparently. And when she went to the doctors, they were like, nothing is there. What is there to test now? You go home. Right? So even for me, I was like, wow, that's amazing. Because it's not something we can do. It's God's power at work through us. But sometimes, the Holy Spirit will inspire us and tell us, you command, you speak. Right, uh, but when you do it by faith, when you do it by the Spirit of God, you'll see the results to it. So I can't forget that at all. Like I was only like, seriously, it disappeared. That's amazing. Okay, so there are many such things that can happen. Uh, but again, what I was saying is, we should not become proud. That oh yeah, oh somebody is not well, bring them to me. I will command. You know, it, people do that. People do all these things. But it's not us, right? Of course, through human beings with the authority that God has given us, we are able to do it, no doubt. But to make it about me, that, oh, okay, take to Pastor Nancy. She will command and it will happen. 
don't do such things because ultimately it's god's power he's teaching us how to use that power we should use it but walk with humility okay fine everyone great fine now let's uh, go for the questions any other questions about confession declaration master yes so i had a question like uh, <laughs> so when you were say uh, sharing about uh, when people try to uh, what do you say stretch the truth like mm. uh, we have the word of god mm. and they try to stretch it more and more the truth so in yeah. social medias and all those things uh, when we hear like this mm. uh, aim it claim it or like some theories or yeah, yeah. so as a believer so what should we do at that time yeah see uh, generally what happens is there is some truth to what they are teaching what is the truth what we are discussing right now the power of confession the confession of faith that's the truth but um people have stretched it to its extreme right so when when you listen to things like this i would say just avoid it don't listen at all if if something why do we listen to sermons to build faith isn't it but when you're listening to such things and it's creating more confusion anger don't listen just shut it off that's it sometimes we can't help it let's say we've gone for a meeting and the preacher is preaching something so wrong okay then what to do you can't even get up and run away from there right if you could maybe you would but yeah uh, suppose you have to be seated there in your mind you just eliminate you listen to what they are saying take the good leave the bad forget it that's it at least that's how i do it yeah there is one more thing to do but that's later if there is a possibility for us to uh maybe <clears throat> confront because sometimes the teachings can be so wrong so so wrong that uh, it has nothing to do with god it has nothing to do with faith but you have to confront in the right way maybe we can tell our leader to speak to that leader and say what you are teaching is wrong you should not be teaching such things got it so there is a place to address false teaching as well yeah sure wait anything any other concerns questions sister i put a question yes sister getru uh how to rebuke which craft powers how to rebuke yeah which craft powers yeah okay uh let's look at one verse okay this is numbers numbers 23 23 i suppose let me go there yeah numbers 23 and verse 23 What does it say? You want to read, Sister Gertrude? Yeah. One minute, Sister. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Numbers twenty-three, twenty-three, right? Yes, yes. For there is no sorcery against Jacob, nor any divination against Israel. it now must be said of jacob and of israel oh what god has done okay so it says here there is no sorcery against jacob no divination against israel so which simply means that we don't have to be worried about any form of witchcraft or um, you know any magic things that people do you don't at all have to be worried first of all because god is saying that he is our protector and uh, he will protect us from all these things i'll just try to read it from a different version for us okay 
Okay, so the amplified version it says, "For there is no enchantment or omen against Jacob, nor is there any divination against Israel." So Jacob and Israel are representative of um, God's people. So today, who are we? We are the spiritual Jacob, spiritual Israel. Okay, so God is saying nothing will touch you. That's His promise. From the beginning, but, uh, so, sister, those in our family who are not saved, hmm. what about them if they are affected with this? Correct. So, can see, we break this power? Yes, you can. Uh, as a family member, let's say they are not saved, right? Others are not saved. We can pray for their protection, sister Gertrude. Um, yeah. Okay, but then you are right. If they themselves are engaged in some things, for example, let's say uh, they participate in some kind of activities that is opening the door for the demonic realm, there yeah. will be some influence on their life. But uh, what we can do is we can look for an opportunity to talk to them, to guide them, to tell them, don't do these things. You no, know, don't engage in uh, such habits. Some habits sometimes. Even things like, um, uh, you know, watching watching e bad things, evil things. Uh, you know, people view um, pornographic videos, things like that. The demons can come in when people do such evil things, right? Habits, uh, uh, sinful things that people do, or listening to certain music which has the influence um, of the demonic kingdom, or even. Even things like substance abuse or you know wrong relationships, all this can open the door for demons to come in. Okay, so Sister Gertrude, one is we can pray to protect yes. them. Second is we can talk to them and we can ask them or convince them to stop these habits or stop sinning. Yeah. Right. So that way you're actually closing the door. Uh, on the demons so that there is no influence that's the right way to go about it and of course the best thing is if they become born again then automatically they come under they come into the kingdom of god and they have protection okay thank you sister sure yeah thank you right anything else that we want to ask So, I mean, these are the problems. We'll talk about all this in Believer's Authority, okay? Believer's Authority, um, about words, about uh, lifestyle, habits, how uh, Satan and his demons, they can actually influence. Because right now, Satan is defeated. Jesus has already won the victory on uh, Satan. But how is it that he's still troubling us? It's because of some, uh, some things that we leave open for the devil. Otherwise, he can't touch us. You got it? When we cover, cover ourselves with prayer, when we cover ourselves um, you know, with the truth of God's word, and we are walking in righteousness, we are so protected. He can try to attack, but he can't do anything much. But if there are what we call as open doors, open doors through sin, again, habits, words, some words which we are speaking, then Demons can attack us. Okay, so we'll study more about it later. Okay, Jennifer, uh, you have some question, Jennifer? Uh, yes, ma'am. Yeah, um, please go ahead. Uh, actually, uh, uh, there is one situation in the Bible where, uh, like, some believers are trying to cast out demons, like, uh, uh, like saying, like, uh, uh, in the name of like uh, Jesus, whom uh, Paul will. Uh, praying like that yeah. there is an instances mm -hmm. there uh, so mm -hmm. if they are, uh, like praying in faith they should uh, the demons should have been casted out and that situation like the demons were uh, were strong against them so uh, i just want to understand yeah. uh, that, that thing okay sure jennifer so what you're sharing it is from acts chapter 19 and over there what happens is there are uh, seven sons of skiva they go and they try to cast out some demons and you know in their declaration what they're saying is uh, in the name of jesus whom paul believes isn't it am yes. i right jennifer uh, yes ma'am yeah. yeah 
so in the name of jesus whom paul preaches whom paul preaches uh, we cast you out but the the what happens is the demons attack them and they beat them up reason is the sons of skiva were not born again so you got it okay. who carries the authority to cast out demons believers yeah, believers if we are in the kingdom of god then jesus gives us the authority to cast out demons so you and i can easily cast out demons but those sons of skiva they were not believers that was the problem you understood jennifer okay <clears throat> i think mostly she did she's uh, she left the call so it's fine anything else any other questions faith confession declaration words yeah ma'am uh, i got disconnected from the uh, i understood okay okay thank you jennifer thank you for that all right so then we'll move on the next section here is about actions and uh, needless to say that faith um actions should follow faith okay in second thessalonians 1:11 it says you know god um gives us his power to add to our faith so I'll just read it out to us yeah so uh, the scripture says here i'm reading it from the amplified okay, let me read from new king james version yes so new king james version second thessalonians 1:11 <clears throat> therefore we also pray always for you that our god would count you worthy of this calling and fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness and the work of faith with power so what is it call um a faith or faith is associated with what is faith associated with over here power but before that dash of faith what does it say dash of faith with power work of faith okay so work of faith so when we say it's very simple what we are uh, discussing right now when we say that we have faith we should have some actions so there's a a story it i i don't think it's a true story but uh, they usually use this so there was a little girl and her mother uh it was a very sunny day so before going outside the house they prayed they prayed for it to rain okay and uh, when they went out of the house uh the girl you know ran back in and she brought an umbrella and the mother said why do you want to take an umbrella because it's so sunny right but the girl says but we prayed for rain right so she believes that it is going to rain the child believes that it's going to rain but the mother is saying why do you want to carry the umbrella whereas the mother also prayed right so sometimes we are like that we say we pray in faith and everything but our action is opposite if we really believe that god would do what we are believing him for then our action will be in line with it think about that child that child really believed it's going to rain so before going out she takes the umbrella and goes there's another uh, story in the book of acts acts 12 peter is in the prison the whole church is praying for peter to come come out okay and god does a miracle god sends an angel he rescues peter from the prison and peter comes peter comes to the house of um, you know uh, one lady mary and uh, he comes and he knocks the the door 
one girl again okay one small girl again she goes she opens the door she is shocked in the night it's peter like how can it be peter he is supposed to be in the prison so she goes back and she tells all the adults over there peter has come back they say it can't be can you imagine they are praying for peter to be released but where is their faith peter has come they are not ready to believe that it's peter right so somewhere what happens in our walk also we say we have faith but our action is something else isn't it but what does james tell us james teaches us that faith and action are uh, two sides of the same coin we can't say that i have faith but no action okay you may have action but no faith that's okay it doesn't work like that both faith and action are necessary so if you really believe that god is you know god is going to help you uh, let's take simple example you are going to clear your papers you are going to you know finish your course then study hard that is the action isn't it because you are believing that god will help you clear so you have to put the corresponding action into it but if you don't believe that you know you are going to uh, clear your course then obviously what is the corresponding action let it go it won't happen because you are believing that it won't happen so you are not putting in any effort got it so every everything that we say we have faith for we have to ask the question what is the corresponding action because when you look at everyone's lives think about abraham god told abraham go sacrifice your son isaac what did he do he went right he went why what was he believing we read that what was he believing in his heart resurrection exactly so he believed god to the point of resurrection and he thought even if my son dies god is able to raise him up right so he shows his faith by his action same thing for us if we believe that god is going to do something we have to start working towards it and um show our actions so don't contradict don't contradict uh, our faith by wrong words or wrong actions got it for faith to flow or faith to be expressed we definitely need right confession right action then uh, we will see you know the results of good faith so this is what it is in um the next chapter here there are some examples i think i will uh, ask you to go ahead and uh, read them there is only one passage which we will look at this is in second kings second kings chapter 5 okay so the passage is about um a commander naaman and his healing so naaman he goes he has leprosy and uh, he goes to elisha the man of god for healing okay but what elisha does is elisha gives him one instruction he says you know you go um you go dip yourself in the jordan seven times and naman feels very angry about it because he's a king right he's a king and uh, how can the man of god not give any attention he's just simply saying you go dip yourself in the uh, jordan seven times but what we read in the story is and the servant convinces naman to do this and he actually goes and does it and finally his leprosy is gone but the point is obedience right it sounds very simple for naman he would have thought elisha will say you know you um, you give me half your kingdom uh, you whatever you know bring all this gold do something great something amazing but elisha didn't say anything like that elisha said something so simple that it made naman very angry okay 
in the same way even in our lives uh, many times god's instruction is very simple very very simple and what is god expecting us to do be obedient be obedient to my simple instruction it can be as simple as make sure you read your bible every day and we think oh what great thing we are going to achieve by just reading bible every day god tell me something complicated you know like turn on your stand on your head or something i'll do it for you god is saying i don't want all that you do the simple thing that i'm telling you to do that's all you'll find victory in the simple things got it so when we talk about faith and action don't think god will say go jump from the mountain go you know bungee jump from the sky do all these things no god may say something small but the most important thing is obedience that's what god is expecting even if god says something so simple so small when we journey in obedience you know there'll be something great that god will do through our lives got it so faith should have some action we can't just you know like sit back so relax yeah faith is there in my heart god is like okay keep it in your heart only <laughs> right do something about it speak your faith make um express it okay so with that i'm just going to stop uh, are there any thoughts about the second aspect that we discussed faith and action okay um sister gertrude has posted this question i didn't see it earlier she's asking how to rebuke witchcraft powers so rebuking witchcraft powers uh, sister it's the same thing you can you can speak with your mouth and rebuke them you can say something like i rebuke you in jesus name or bind you in the name of jesus okay so we can do that sometimes it's helpful to pray with a few more people so if a group of us pray if we fast and pray and we uh, rebuke together that also will be quite effective any particular uh, biblical prayers to be said uh, sister biblical any scriptures uh, scriptures yeah from so the you, bible yes so scriptures you can talk about um, you know things like the defeat of satan um, you can quote from let's see what about this scripture sister what about uh, uh, behold i give you authority and power over which serpents one? and scorpions which one sister it's luke i think luke 10 i'm not sure but behold i give you authority and power to trample down scorpions and serpents and over all yeah, the powers of the enemy 10, 19, and i yeah. think by any means to harm you yeah you can quote that you can quote um Uh, scriptures like uh, 1 John 3:8, uh, where it says that the Son of God was made manifest to destroy the works of the devil. You can um, you can quote uh, Acts 10:38, which says Jesus of Nazareth, uh, God anointed him with the Holy Spirit and and with power, and how he went about doing good, healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. you can especially quote uh, hebrews chapter 2 verses 14 and 15 where it says that um, uh, uh, you know the lord jesus he rendered powerless him who had the power of death that is the devil okay that oh, he okay. might yeah so you can quote hebrews 2 verses 14 and 15 you can quote uh, colossians i think it's colossians 2 i'll just tell you the reference for that also so basically sister you can start quoting about the cross and the devil doesn't like it just okay. talk about the cross talk about the victory of the cross talk about the blood of jesus okay yeah yeah so colossians 2 verses 14 and 15 again that says that you know satan is uh, defeated jesus has triumphed on the cross 
so these are all scriptures you can start quoting and the devil will run away right away every witchcraft right it, it shouldn't hold up as you speak the truth of god's word yeah okay sister thank you yeah sure all right so with that i think the time is also up so let's close in prayer i will leave it open for someone to pray could could you kindly pray let's pray heavenly father thank you for this day lord thank you for this time thank you for the session of father lord uh, thank you also for teaching us and help us to uh, confess what we speak of father help us to also confess by your words of father lord jesus for whatever you say yes lord we also should say the same thing of father yes lord we are victorious in christ father lord thank you for this teaching lord jesus father whatever we read of father holy spirit Uh, let it implement in our lives, oh Father. Commit the rest of the day in your hands. Lead us and guide us, oh Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we ask and pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. God bless you.